Welcome in, everybody. It's your boy, Scott Proctor, joined, as always, by Matt Moore. So we're back with another episode of Simple Question, but this time we'll have more than one because we got a special guest joining us today, a four-time first-team All-Pro, a three-time Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys and the franchise's all-time leading tackler. It's the great Darren Woodson. Darren, thanks so much for joining us, my man. How are we doing today? Uh, Scott, Matt, I'm doing great, man. I, I really am, and I'm... Uh... And I'm so far, far past the, the the NFL and all that stuff. I got a couple of businesses that I'm running, man. But I always love talking football. So we're all good. Absolutely. Oh, and you yeah. got plenty of reason to be happy right now. And we'll start right there. Earlier this month, Darren, you were named one of 15 modern-day finalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Congratulations on that. It's long, long overdue. But, Darren, how did it feel to finally advance to the finalist stage of the Hall of Fame this year after being a semifinalist six times? It was great, man. It was a great feeling, just to be honest with you guys. You know, I look, I, for the longest, I've always wanted this. I always wanted And I know a lot of people are always, you know, they give you these these – you know, say, well, I didn't, they didn't, not a big deal. No, it's a big deal, man. You know, I, I worked my ass off for the opportunity to get here. Uh, not only did we win championships back, back then, but if you're any type of competitor, uh, individually, you don't mind the honors. You want to be recognized for your work. And I can be, you know, my thought is, you know, look, I put those long hours in. I showed up early. I stayed late. Put those, watched a ton of film. Felt like I could play with anybody. Uh, at any point and was one of the best safeties in the league. So Definitely. it finally came about, man. It was just, um, it, I was happy. And I'm more happy for the, you know, my teammates, my former teammates that I played with and for my family who, who stuck by me this whole time. No doubt, man. It's a Absolutely. special time. And you put in the hard work, man. You get to reap the benefits now. You certainly earned it. The final in inductees are announced on Super Bowl week during the NFL Honor Show. What do you imagine that moment would be like to hear your name and know that you'll finally be rocking and receiving a gold jacket? Man, I'll tell you what. If, if it happens, it's back in my hometown in Phoenix. Uh, my That's entire family yeah. would be there. I'm telling you, they, they would run me off the stage. We'd have to be family and <laughs> friends and all that because of but that, I would uh, honestly, I would just rejoice in the fact of, of just being around, you know, specifically my my immediate family, my mom, my, my sisters, my brothers, you know, they, they, they've been there for, for a long time. And uh, I just want uh, I want them to enjoy this moment because, I, you know, I was a West Side kid from Phoenix, Arizona, seven years old. I was dreaming to be a, 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 an NFL football player and my dream came true. But it was a lot of hard work, a lot of pay, a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, pushed me along the way. I didn't do anything by myself, man. I, I had so many people that uh, helped me get to where I needed to be. Takes a village. Yeah. It absolutely does. And uh, amongst all the other accolades that you have, Darren, you are a Ring of Honor member for, for Dallas. And as you look at the team they have right now, do you have some guys that you think might be joining you uh, at some point in that Ring of Honor? Oh, absolutely. And Zach, you know, starts with Tyron Smith and, and Zach Martin. You know, they've been the mainstays on that offensive line and you know, perennial pro bowlers for a long time yeah. uh, and, and guys that are well-deserved uh, to be in the ring of honor and hopefully at some point be in the Hall of Fame as well. So, you know, I, I probably start with those two. Uh, you got a young guy, Michael Parsons, that uh, if he continues to be consistent and play at the high level that he's playing at and continues to lead. And I think there's a lot more growth than Mike, Michael Parsons within the locker room and as a leader yeah. that you'll see here. But, you know, those are three names that just come to come to mind and, and that uh, have opportunities to probably to, to wear those gold jackets at some point. No doubt about it. I love those two first names. Two of the best offensive linemen in the entire NFL for, for you know, close to a decade. And Michael Parsons, as we know, that's, that's one of one, man. I don't know if we've seen too many guys like him coming across, you know, the NFL. So that's going to be something to watch, watch his career unfold. Yeah. Talking more about this current Cowboys team, Darren, what did you learn over the weekend, or should I say on Monday night during the Cowboys road super wild card win over Tom Brady and the Bucks? What did they what did the Cowboys prove to you this particular team in terms of what they can accomplish this postseason? Well, they got amnesia, man. They got over the fact that they got their butts, you know, whooped yeah. the week before against the, the Washington <laughs> Commanders. And they got over and much, and that's what good teams do. I mean, you have your downs, you have your highs and your lows. And when you have your lows, you got to get over it. You got to move forward. And they did. You know, they they were resilient, resilient in the fact of getting past that moment of, of failure and how they played to now getting ready for the greatest that's ever done it and Tom Brady and going against the team in, in, in the Bucks that beat them earlier in the season, uh, dominated them the year before. So there's, you know, this is a team that they had to get past mentally and they overcame that early in that game. And I, I just, like, what I loved about this team's the, the want to that they had was they had a swagger going into that game 
and a confidence that I hadn't seen in a while. And if they get that confidence going and they can play with that swagger and that attitude, you know, the tournament's open, it's wide open, specifically in the NFC. I mean, there's teams right now that, you know, there's three teams who I think they can win it. Uh, and that'd be Philly and San Francisco and, and the Cowboys. But the Cowboys can play at that level. Personnel-wise, they're there. Attitude-wise, they, they haven't been, but they showed a little bit of that this past week. No doubt. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Darren. And I, I, some of that definitely comes from the coaching staff. And I know Mike McCarthy has been, you know, talked about quite a bit. Do you feel like he has kind of put some of those rumors in that talk about moving on from him to bed uh, with the win in Tampa Bay? So I think it gives them a fresh start. Look, if they would have lost against the Washington Commanders at the end of the season and then lost the first round, oh, then there's a problem. You know, it would have been a heavy burden to handle with the Jones family because I think that's there would have probably been a cause for a change. Yeah, I, I think what happened this past week, he got his team ready to play, and he has the entire season. Look, there's no doubt. You know, this team it was 12 and five in the, the season. They had a hell of a season, and, and a lot of that goes back to to Coach McCarthy. But he got he he got that win past them. They win this game coming up, and they're prepared and they play at the highest level. Look, man, I, I think this guy has a lot to build off of, and, and he's still young in this in this with this organization. He's still young in the relationship with the, the, the Jones family. He's still young with the relationship with a lot of the players as well, and a lot of a lot of those players and the training staff and the equipment guys they love Coach McCarthy. They love what he's doing yeah. for the organization. No doubt about it, Darren. You were a part of. Dallas Cowboys dynasty uh, in the early 90s, a big part of that. I'm curious why you think the Cowboys win nearly 30 years since your rookie year without a road playoff win. We talked to Steve Young on the show last week, and he kind of talked about a, maybe a lack of team grit in the locker room amongst players. I'm curious what you think the Cowboys have kind of been missing all these years to go, like, like we mentioned, 30 years without a single road playoff win with certainly you know, plenty of talent. Oh, it's plenty of talent. And, and that goes back to the Romo days when right. – you know, Romo came in and Parcells really got this team up to a high level of play. And, you know, they had all this talent with, you know, T.O. and, uh, you know, DeMarcus Ware. And, you know, they were loaded on the offensive line. They just, you know, they, they were the full package and, and they just couldn't get there. I think a lot of it has to do with just, just being honest is, again, having that, that attitude and that confidence of going into games thinking, knowing that you are the better team. Look, and I, and I can go back to the early 90s. And that attitude, uh, and Jimmy Johnson has that book uh, called Swagger. And if you haven't read it, go read it. It speaks directly to who that man was. He was somewhat of like a psychologist, counselor, man, in, his, in the fact of how he dealt with us, how he built our confidence up, how we fought at practice. Like he would allow us to engage in these brawls and wouldn't let the coaches break it up. Just, hey, you guys figure it out. <laughs> and and it, it, it really sharpened us during the week because, you know, Fighting with Michael Irvin every day, which was was the norm for me, mm -hmm. it was a lot easier when I was playing against Jerry Rice or playing against the Minnesota Vikings, whoever we're playing, because I was callous to the fights. Like it was, that was just a spark. It was just what it was, and I think that's what that that's the attitude that this team is kind of missing. Like you always want a dog, you always want somebody to be that guy who might say something crazy. And Jimmy said in '93, he said, "Look, we're going to kick the San Francisco 49ers' ass tomorrow." Period. And that's how it went. And sometimes you got to have that bravado about you. And that guy that's in that locker room, that coach that's out there that, that you know, instills that in you. And I think that's one of the things that they're missing within that, that locker room. A lot of guys that uh, have played with the Dallas Cowboys over the years are happy to have that star on their helmet and are happy to have the the, the radio shows and and all the things that came, uh, that came along with being a Cowboy. But – you know, you got to have an attitude on that field, man, that you are the better team. Yeah. And uh, I think right now they they kind of showed me a little bit of that last week. I'd love to see it. Yeah, they absolutely did. And, you know, recently you've been talking about this secondary that they have, and you said some glowing things about them. Do you think this is going to be the best secondary Brock Purdy has seen in his short stint as the starting quarterback for the Niners? Uh, yes, I think so. I think, look, I think one of the things that Purdy's going to have to, Brock Purdy's going to have to deal with is the pass rush one. I mean, he's mm -hmm. probably had seen this type of the pass rush with, you know, D-Law and, and Michael Parsons. And, you know, they're bringing guys off the bench that can get out the quarter, specifically on the edges. Uh, and they bring a lot of pressure. They'll bring some five-man pressures along with that at the same time. But on the outside, yes, he, he's he's got to deal with Diggs. And if he throws it out there and, and, and lets it float a little bit, Diggs will take it to the house. And Diggs is not just a guy who's going to get it on his get you know, just let it touch his hands. He's trying to take it to the house. Um, and you got a safety group 
that they're opportunistic. We saw them last week. You get a, you know, uh, Curse gets an interception in the end, back of the end zone. Hooker gets a fumble. I mean, I mean, these guys, they can be opportunistic around the football. So it's going to be a different group. And San Fran can't turn the ball over and make it a short field. I think San Fran is at its best when that defense is on the field and they make you uh, have these long drives. They get after you and do those things. But they get a short field and the Cowboys, you know, get in the plus 20, then, you know, you get points on the board. No doubt. And this is the newest addition to a longstanding rivalry that, I mean, you know very well. How big is this San Francisco-Dallas rivalry, especially, you know, coming from a guy like you that played in some of the biggest games of the rivalry? Look, in the 90s, it was the game. Uh, Regardless of who was playing in the Super Bowl, that was the NFC Championship game was the Super Bowl. And, you know, we saw, I saw a lot of Jerry Rice. I saw a lot of Steve Young. I saw, you know, some... You know, Brent Jones, I saw a lot of those guys, you know, you know, Ricky Waters, man, I could probably name half their offensive guys on, and, and then to watch their defense and what they were capable of doing. But they, we were the two most talented teams, personnel-wise. We matched up extremely well. Uh, they ran an offense that was the, that West Coast, really fast-paced offense, get the ball out of your hands. We were a smash-mouth type of team. Uh, you know, we wanted to run it at you, and, you know, they used to basically – Troy would tell you, we're going to run this counter and we're going to run it right at you. Stop. Uh, so it was it was uh, it was just a great matchup on on both ends. And we were both well coached teams. So and, and again, confidence on both sides of the ball felt like, you know, we were so, so good on, you know, both teams were so good during the regular season and getting into the postseason that there wasn't a whole lot of backing down. Uh, on each other and those games always made for 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 great reels they just don't make robberies like that anymore Darren. No. i'm gonna keep yeah. it real they just don't do it. a lot of guys are too friendly it's too friendly out it, there man. it truly is man it's <laughs> it's seeping into all sports but particularly in the football i'd love to see that more rugged side it's particularly those robberies especially when it's two mm-hmm. great teams two well-coached teams i love to see more of that hopefully we can see some of that maybe between the you know the chiefs and bills the chiefs and Bengals are moving forward at least in the afc but Darren, last question before we let you get up out of here, man. Can we, can we get a Super Bowl pick up out of you? I heard you say earlier you like three teams out of the NFC you can see making it to the Super Bowl. Which of oh, those man. one would you pick to make it, and who do you like out of the AFC for a potential Super Bowl matchup? Look, I, 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 I'm not going to bet against Mahomes. I mean, I, 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 there's something about that team that, yeah. uh, that, that still, you know, it, to me it's Bills and Mahomes. I, I look, I, I, the, the game this week, the Bills – Cincinnati, great game, Definitely. great matchup, and it, that game can go either way. I think those two teams match up extremely well. I, I think the the what you're going to see is in Kansas City, you're going to see Ka- the Kansas City Chiefs beat Jacksonville and move on, and then have home field advantage. I think home field advantage is going to play a, a huge role. I don't know if Kansas City personnel wise is the best team in the AFC, but having home field advantage, having Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, I'm going with them to get there in the, in the AFC. NFC is tricky. I can't believe y'all put me on the spot knowing my Cowboys are going to be in San Fran this week. We had to. to. (laughs) Uh, It's tough, man. It's wide open. That's a tough one. It's wide open. That's a tough one. Look, the Cowboys don't match up well with San Francisco. San Francisco wants to run the ball at you. And I'll just be honest with you. They want to run the ball at you, and they play strong defense. They get after the passer. I think San Francisco wins this game this this next week. I love my Cowboys. to I hope my Cowboys win, but they're not built. Uh, physically to withstand uh, the pressure that they're going to have with that McCaffrey running game, Devo Samuels, and, and if Brock Purdy takes care of the ball, it's, it's going to be hard to beat them. I think San Francisco, Kansas City go to the Super Bowl. San Francisco wins it. Smart man. I'm not surprised whatsoever. That was my preseason pick as well. I think the, the winner of this matchup between the Cowboys and San Francisco, I think they they represent the NFC in the Super Bowl for sure. I think, you know, if Dallas is able to beat San Francisco and all the talent they have on both sides of the ball, I like them to roll over Philly in a potential NFC championship game because I believe, you know, they've they, <laughs> they've just improved at that point, beating Tom Brady and then to beat, you know, the Chiefs. I think the mm-hmm. Eagles would just be a nice little appetizer before the Super Bowl. But this has been a blast, Darren. Congratulations. Hey, Scott. I can't, Scott. Matt, oh, what's I can't up? What's up? Have me, me going against my Cowboys. That's a damn shame. Look at me, man. <laughs> I'm hey, house. but you kept it real, though. Can't nobody accuse Darren Woodson of being, uh, being subjective. This man keeps it objective to the real. 
And we love to see it, man, Darren. This has been a blast, man. Congratulations again on being a Pro Football Hall of Fame finalist. We would love to see you finally get that gold jacket. But that's going to do it for us for this episode of Simple Question. For your boy, Scott Proctor, Matt Morris, and the great Darren Woodson, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.